All right, here we're going to do another example of finding the area of a region bounded by two polar curves. So here we're going to find the area that's inside both the circle r equals cosine theta and the rows curve r equals sine 2 theta. So I'm going to do a quick little, a quick little sketch of these, hopefully. Um, so the first one here I'm going to graph is going to be r equals sine of 2 theta. So r equals sine of 2 theta. For a rows curve, recall if the number in front of theta is even. If it's even, which well certainly it is in this case, we take 2 and multiply it by whatever that number is. Well, in that case this is 4, and that's going to give us the number of petals. The number of petals on our rows curve. So. Notice uh, if theta equals 0, we'll get sine of 0, which is 0. Notice that theta equals pi over 4. We'll get sine of 2 times pi over 4, which is going to be sine of pi over 2. And that's where we're going to get our r value of 1, kind of our maximum distance from the origin. And as theta increases from 0 to pi over 4, uh, our r value will increase. And then as theta uh, increases from pi over 4 to pi over 2, uh, we'll get values on the inside from pi over 2 to pi. And that's going to make our radius decrease back to 0. And that'll give us one little petal of our rows curve. You could plot some more points and you would find that basically it's just symmetric. Um, we're going to get a petal in each little quadrant. So our rose curve would look something like this. All right, so there's a, a very rough sketch of r equals sine 2 theta. Um, r equals uh, cosine theta. So r equals cosine theta is just a circle. Uh, it's going to go out to a distance of 1 on the uh, x-axis. So let me see if I can make a little circle here. Okay, so there's our, our little circle. All right, so now what I'm going to try to do again is we're trying to find the area inside of uh, these two circles. So we're trying to find this little area um, and this little area as well. They should be symmetric uh, just by the symmetry of, uh, just based on the symmetry of our, our, our curves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the points of intersection by setting them equal to each other. So let's see, we had r equals sine of 2 theta, and we had r equals cosine theta. So again, we'll just set those equal. So let me label this one. This is going to be r equals cosine theta. Well, to find the points of intersection, I'm just going to use a little trig identity. Sine of 2 theta, well, that's 2 sine theta times cosine theta equals cosine theta. We can subtract cosine theta from both sides. Factor the cosine theta out. Then we'll be left with 2 times sine theta minus 1 inside of our parentheses. So we'll get cosine theta has to equal 0. Or from our other factor, we'll get that sine of theta has to equal 1 half. Well, um, cosine of theta equals 0 at pi over 2. So that's uh, definitely going to be one of our little points of intersection at pi over 2. Um, let's see, sine of theta is going to equal 1 half. I guess one place in the first quadrant where sine of theta equals 1 half uh, is going to be at the angle pi over 6. And I think uh, just using these two, that'll be enough for us to figure out, uh, to be able to solve the problem. All right, so forget all about the pi over 4. We really don't need that anymore. Um, that was just kind of to help us sketch the rose curve. This, uh, this point of intersection, again, where they're crisscrossing, that is going to be useful. That's going to correspond to theta equals pi over 6. Um, so what I'm going to do to find the, the actual area now that we're interested in the first thing I'm going to do is set up an integral to find uh, this lower portion. 
that's enclosed. So I'm going to find this darkly shaded region. Okay, so to get that very dark, uh, that that sort of it's not it's not half, but this bottom part of sort of the top part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my formula. So it's going to be one half r squared d theta. Okay, so the limits of integration are going to correspond to 0 to pi over 6. That's what we just found. So 0 to pi over 6. And notice that the curve that it's uh, bounded by, the, the curve that it's trapped inside of, that's our rose curve, which was sine of 2 theta. Okay, so that's going to give us this bottom portion. Well, to figure out the top part, Okay, so to figure out the top part, well now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to compute another integral. So I'm going to have one half the integral. Well now we start at the angle pi over 6, so that's going to be our lower limit of integration. Um, we're back at the origin at theta equals pi over 2. And notice now it's trapped by the circle, um, the region's bounded by the circle, which is cosine theta. So we're going to have cosine theta quantity squared d theta. And again, that's only going to give us the top part. <clears throat> so what we're going to do to get the entire shaded area is we'll take all of this and we'll multiply it by 2. So, right, that's kind of the, the first step of this, I think, is just getting it set up. Uh, I think this can all be a, a definitely a good bit confusing. So, um, again, you know, just kind of, I think sketching the curves will help a lot. So, hopefully that part makes sense. Um, let's now actually talk about computing these lovely integrals. So, what we'll have to do is use a couple uh, identities. So let me compute, uh, I'm just going to compute this integral from 0 to pi over 6 um, of sine squared 2 theta. Well, again, this is where we'll have to use our identity, 0 to pi over 6. So this is going to be 1 half, 1 minus cosine. Again, whatever's on the inside, we double that. So instead of 2 theta, we're going to get 4 theta d theta. So let's see, we can pull the 1 half out front, we can integrate this, this is going to be theta, we'll get minus sine of 4 theta over 4. Again, we'll evaluate that from 0 to pi over 6. So let's see here, we'll get 1 half, uh, theta again is going to be pi over 6, minus sine of 4 times pi over 6 is going to be um, I guess that will reduce to 2 pi over 3, all over 4. And then we've got to subtract away our lower limits. So when we plug in 0, we'll get 0 and sine of 0, which is also 0. So it looks like we're left with 1 half times pi over 6 minus, well, let's see, sine of 2 pi over 3. Um, I always have to stop and think about these. Sine of pi over 3, I guess, is going to be root 3 over 2. Um, so sine of 2 pi over 3 should also be uh, root 3 over 2. So we'll have square root of 3 over 2 all over 4. And then we'll subtract away uh, just 0. So let's see. Uh, this is going to give us pi over 12. This part we would have 3 over 2 times uh, 1 fourth equivalently dividing by 4. So that's going to give us root 3 over 8, but when we distribute the half, we'll get root 3 over 16. All right, so that will be useful. Um, and notice, again, I didn't even multiply this by the half, okay? So I just computed the integral. So if we take 1 half of the integral, right, 1 half of the integral from 0 to pi over 6, we'll have to take 1 half of this stuff. There's a lot of bookkeeping here now. Um, this is going to give us pi over 24, I guess minus the square root of 3 over 32. Again, there was a 1 half that appeared, but that was just simply from the trig identity. 
So that's going to be important. That will be the um, that will be the value for the top integral. So it says again we're going to get two plus the first integral, so one half times the integral from zero to pi over six sine of two theta squared. That's what we just computed. That's going to be pi over twenty four minus the square root of three over thirty two. So it says we get two times, uh, we get that integral, plus we'll have to evaluate the other one as well. So let me do that now. So now I'm going to compute the integral from pi over 6 to pi over 2. This is just going to be cosine squared theta. Again, we'll have to use our trig identity on uh, the second one. So let's see, pi over 6 to pi over 2. This is going to be 1 half 1 plus cosine of 2 theta d theta. So let's see, we've got 1 half. The antiderivative of 1 will just be theta. Um, and then we'll have plus sine 2 theta all over 2. Again, we'll evaluate this from pi over 6 to pi over 2. All right, so we're going to get 1 half times, uh, we'll plug in pi over 2. We'll get sine of uh, 2 times pi over 2, which is going to be sine of pi. Sine of pi is 1, so we'll be left with 1 half. Minus the lower limit of integration, we'll plug in pi over 6. And then we'll get sine of 2 times pi over 6, which is going to be sine of pi over 3. Well, let's see, we just said sine of pi over 3 is going to be uh, root 3 over 2. Again, all divided by 2. All right, so what do we have here? We've got 1 half times pi over 2 plus uh, 1 half minus pi over 6 minus, this will be square root of 3 over 4. So again, we can always multiply this by a half. We'll get pi over 4 plus a fourth, minus pi over 12, minus the square root of 3 over 8. Um, let's see, so that's going to be the value of our integral. But again, we have to multiply that by 1 half as well. So when I multiply that by 1 half, I should have just distributed the 2 at the beginning, right, and got rid of it, but whatever. Um, so we have 1 half times the integral from pi over 6 to pi over 2 of cosine squared. Again, that's where we're getting this value. Pi over 4 plus 1 fourth minus pi over 12 minus the square root of 3 over 8. All right, so here if we distribute the 2, we'll get pi over 12 minus square root of 3 um, over 16. The 2 times the half would just cancel. So then we would be left with pi over 4 plus a fourth minus pi over 12 minus square root of 3 over 8. And of course, you could always start getting common denominators and simplifying this a little bit more. I guess let's go ahead and do that. We're so close. Grab one more piece of paper. All right, so we can always combine this a little bit more, I guess. Um, I could multiply top and bottom of that fraction by 3. We'll have 3 pi over 12 and 4 pi, or excuse me, 1 pi over 12. That's going to give us 4 pi over 12, so we'll simplify that in just a second. Um, let's see. Oh, we've got a minus pi over 12. I totally missed that one. So, um, so let's do that. So the pi over 12 and the uh, pi over 12 will just cancel. Um, so let's just leave that how it was. Might as well just leave that as pi over 4. So we'll leave that term alone. Um, we could multiply top and bottom of that one by 2. We would have negative root 3 over 16 minus 2 root 3 over 16. So minus 3 root 3 over 16. That'll take care of that one. And that one, we already subtracted that part away. We've got 1 fourth left over. I hope there were no crazy mistakes in there anywhere. Um, but to me, that now looks like that would be our area.